Can everyone online hear me? Everyone okay? If you can just put a chat or say that you can hear me. If you can put a sharp sign or something. Everyone online, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay, so. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatu wa fil akhirati hasanatu wa kina adhaban nar. This is a dua that encompasses everything our dunya and our akhira. A narration comes that our Prophet وسلم, used to recite this dua, including in his other duas, he used to encompass this dua, including. And when the Prophet وسلم, used to greet someone, he would not release his hand, he would wait for the other person to release the hand. And after making salam, many times he would read this dua. So this dua is very important to even know the meaning. So we'll try and go through it. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Our Lord Give us in the world goodness. hasana, And in the year after, give us goodness. And protect us from the punishment of the fire. Right? So if you analyze this, hasana, so that encompasses everything of goodness in the dunya. This is one of the best du'as you can make. Everything from good spouse, good life, health, wealth, iman, fit dunya. hasana. And in the year after, to give us goodness. And protect us from the fire, the punishment of the fire. So, muhaddithin uh, say, the punishment of the fire is two. One is the punishment of the fire of our nafs, the, the shahawat, and the punishment in the year after, the fire itself. So may Allah protect us and may Allah make it easy for us to recite this dua every single day. Inshallah ta'ala, accept from us. So what we've got yesterday, we spoke, we had, um, we've got two hufad, we've got three hufad in our class, mashallah, mashallah. Uh, so we've got Hafid Ridwan from South Africa, we've got Hafid Ahmed, and we've got Hafid Mariam, uh, Maria, mashallah, Allah reward them, and we are blessed to have three hufad in our class. I'd like to honor Hafid um, Ahmed uh, now to start off with some Quran fast, inshallah ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان صدق الله العظيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله الريوارد حفيد أحمد and may Allah take him from strength to strength آمين يا رب العالمين Okay, so we have a new student today, mashallah, Auntie Sima has joined us today. Uh, okay. Mashallah, welcome, welcome to our class. Oh, is it? Mashallah, okay, nice. You can help each other, mashallah. Okay. 40 years friendship, mashallah, excellent. No, um, oh, I got it here, okay. 
Okay, so uh, what we'll do is a few students um, have said they, they're happy with Monday's class. They managed to understand Ma'rifa and Nakira. There's a few students that got a little bit confused and we have Auntie Seema here. So I'm just gonna do a recap. Like I said, we are family. We're all gonna go through this together, inshallah ta'ala, at the same space. Okay, so um, one thing I would like is that with regard to, I'm gonna start asking questions now, inshallah ta'ala. So one of the things when we ask questions is that if I ask a student a question, I'd like only that student to answer. So if I ask a student, like I said on Monday, what is one plus one? And he's still thinking, I don't want someone else to scream two because that just intimidates that student. We want everybody to learn. So, and if you ask him what's two plus two and if he wants to take time to think, let him think. Let's not scream out the answer so we all can get together in Shalatal and complete this course. So with regard to uh, Monday's class, right? Brother Ishtiad, on Monday, there are seven signs of nouns. On Monday, we done the first sign. What was the first sign of noun? There was two things to it. Yes. Yes. Okay. A noun. Okay. So brothers answered if a word indefinite. indefinite, mashallah. Excellent. So brother saying if we have a word. If the word starts with al, right, we lock it in as a noun, and that means it is definite or indefinite. It means it's definite, right? So what if we got book, book, and you have al in front of it, kitab, it becomes definite, al kitab, right? The book, excellent, right? So brother said, if it's definite, it's got al in front, and if it's indefinite, right, it will have damatain, patatain, or kasratain. So let's say, for example, let's keep to our word of kitab. So we've got here uh, Sarah. So if we're going to say, the book, it will be Al Kitab. And if you say a book, Kitab, Kitabun, right? So a book is Kitabun. Now, what I want to do is a small little exercise here. So we're not going to worry too much about, I taught you the sun and moon letters, right? Lam Shamsi and Lam Kamariya. Don't worry about it. So, for example, we've got here Nahrun, right? So because it joins, it's a it's, it's shamsia it's an nahrun an nahrun but you don't have to say that just say al nahrun right you don't have to say because i think that shamsia and kamaria was people were getting a bit confused so just say al nahrun don't worry about the tajweed tajweed will be an nahrun we'll say al nahrun abdullah al nahrun so that is the rava what if it's only a rava one second, one second. Now, if it's a river, let's look back here. So we got either going to have this, the, the sixes, right? Abdullah, so it will become Nahrun. It will become Nahrun as it is there, Nahran or Nahrin, which will make it a river. So we can use either one of these. We can use either that that or that nahrun nahran or nahrin which will be a river right so let's look at jamalun uh, brother salman 
We've got Jamalun. Jamalun is a camel, right? What if you want to say the camel? Al? So it's Jamalun, a camel. I want to say the camel. The camel. So, Al? Al Jamalu, that's it. Okay, I think I haven't shared the, to the screen one second. So Al is not sharing. Will it share all of them? Will it share all seven now? All the windows. So if I change the window? Yeah. If I go to that, it will share it again. Okay. Okay, mashallah. So we have Al Jamalu, the camel, right? I want everyone to be 100% on this, right? So we've got here now. Brother Asif, we've got here Shajaratun. Shajaratun, a tree. A tree, right? Just a single tree. But I want to know the tree. What do you do? Al Shajara two. You still keep it there. Yes, you still keep it there. You take off the damatain and you just put it as one. When you add, I'll remember the golden rule. The golden rule, Junaid, can you have Al and Tanween in a word? So can you have Al? And damatain, fatatain, kasratain. Can you have al shajaratun? Why not? Either one. Either one or the other. Antifozi, you can't have al shajaratun. It's either definite or indefinite. So if we had to say al shajaratun, it would be the a tree. You can't speak English like that. The a tree. It's either the tree or a tree. So al shajaratu or shajaratun right auntie so you can have shajaratun shajaratan or shajaratin but if you got that no al in front why do we have the double fatha and double we're going to get to that but that's a good question now nahu what we're studying now this grammar is the study of the encasing of a word so in there we have dhamma fatha and kasra they will depict where the word fits in a sentence and inshallah we will get to that so i'll give you one example if you have daraba daraba muhammad or let's use wala, daraba waladun daraba waladun means a boy hit but if i have daraba waladan he hit a boy just to give you a taste of how it works it just moves the placing for english translation it moves where the word becomes in the sentence Okay, so well done, mashallah. Good question. Okay, brother Zakaria from Sydney. Yes. Brother Zakaria, we're looking at Tufahatun. Mm -hmm. Tufahatun, right? Yep. That is an apple. If I yep. want to say the apple. At-tufah. at But don't forget that ta as well. Yeah, at tufah at Nice, beautiful. So that is the apple. Okay, yeah, so it looks yeah. like everybody, mashallah, is catching on to it. We're going to do one more, Waladun. And I'm going to ask um, Sister Zuha. Sister Zua, we've got Waladun, which is a boy. I want to make it the boy. Al Waladu. Mashallah, excellent. Well done. Okay. All right, so we'll just look at some vocab we'll go through on your, on your vocab list. We've got kitabun, 
We've got Imranu Kalamun. I want you to scratch out Sabo'un. There was a typing error on there for Predator. Sorry, uh, this is our first version, our first copy. So there's a few mistakes we'll go through. I think everyone's picked up that mistake on the WhatsApp. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Every, auntie, I'll, I'll show you that. You must that day. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. There was a spelling mistake on there as well, right? So we'll get to that, right? So let's just look at some words that we got here. Kitabun is a book that comes in the Quran. Imranu comes in the Quran. Kalamun comes in the Quran. Waraka, warda, antum, salihun, babun, himarun. All these words come in the Quran. So you'll recognize them. So try and familiar, familiarize yourself with these words, inshallah, ta'ala, as you're going on. So alhamdulillah, definite and indefinite. We've done that. Everyone seems to be confident with definite and in, indefinite. Is there anyone that has any issue or wants to ask a question with definite and indefinite? It's pretty simple. One is, pass me the chair, pass me a chair. Definite. So, auntie, if you see anywhere in the Quran, if you see the word starts with al, lock it in, it's a noun. So we need to identify, to learn a language, we need to know what are nouns, verbs, and particles. Already you guys know, if you see a word in the Quran with al, it's a noun. If you see a word that ends with tanwin, patatin, damatin, kasatin, it's a noun. You can lock it in. It's both, both, noun, both, are noun. both are nouns. One is definite, one is indefinite. So you sorted, you know that's a noun. So you, you're one step ahead. Now that's, that's one step of seven. Now we're going to move to the second sign of a noun. The second sign of a noun is very easy. Very easy. Not as easy as the third, but quite easy. We got something called ta marbuta. So two ways we can, we can, we can, there's actually a few names for it. So the easiest one is permanenta. Permanenta. Okay. So any, everybody will recognize this, inshallah. It's as simple as this. Feminine ta, that's called ta marbuta, or simply a feminine ta. Now, what's the difference? It's called a feminine, that should give it away easily. Right, so our next part of identifying a noun is if a word is in a feminine state, you can pretty much lock it in that that's going to be a noun. If it's in a feminine state, it's going to be a noun. What do I mean by feminine state? It ends with a ta marbuta. The word, the word ends with a ta. It's as simple as that. Shajara, shajara ta. It got a ta at the end. Lock it in, that's a noun. Lock it in. Okay, the screen's just gone. Is your screen showing? Okay, one second. The default speaker has changed. Okay, so online students, online students, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Jazakallah. Right. We'll switch the aircon on if the remote. It's just up from there. If any, if you say, hmm? Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, behind Uncle. Okay.
Okay, so we know ma'rifa and nakira, definite, indefinite, we on ta marbuta. So the easiest way for the third, for the second one is if the word ends with a feminine ta, you know it's a feminine word, lock it in as a noun. It's as simple as that. So we look at some examples. Most feminine nouns that refer to human beings derive from the masculine. So you'll take the masculine word and you add a feminine ta, and that's how it becomes a feminine word. For example, student. So a student is a talib. So if we look here on the right hand corner, we've got here, talib is a male student. Talib is a male student, right? So on, in your book, in your workbook, it's on uh, page five. Talib is a male student. If you want to make it a female student, easy. Just add a feminine ta and it becomes talibatun. And then, you know, I know 100% that's a noun because it's got a feminine ta. So same thing we'll carry on here. We've got tabib. Tabib is a doctor. If you want to make it a female doctor, tabiba tun. Tabiba tun. Simple, we've added a feminine ta. Immediately look in the Quran, you find any word with a feminine ta, I know it's a noun. That's it, it's as simple as that. A katib is a writer. Female will be? Female will be of katib? Katiba tun. Right, so, that, so now you already know ma'rifa, definite, indefinite, and another way of identifying nouns is with the feminine ta. However, there's one thing that, there's a couple of things you don't need to worry about at this stage. Now, for example, we've got the male and the female. Some words in Arabic are only female. Some words are only female, I don't know why, right? For example, we have a car, sayara, sayara tun, there is no sayara, say, sayarun. There is no sayarun. There is no male word for ka. It's always a female word. Sayaratun. This sayaratun will come in the Quran. It's a common word in the Quran. I think if I remember correctly, Surah Yusuf, right? It referred to the caravan uh, and Surah Tul uh, Am, no, uh, Araf, one of the war ayat, there was a caravan. Then we have shajaratun, a tree. Tree is only feminine. There's no shajarun. Tree is just constantly a feminine word. Shajaratun. We got shajaratun. Afid Ahmed in the first choose shajaratun. We've got. Wala takraba hadi shajarata. Wala takraba hadi shajarata. Fatakuna mina dalimin. So what happened there? So Allah Taala said, Adam alayhi salam, you and Hawa. Stay in Jannah, but do not come for, uh, 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 do not come close to this tree, else you will become from the wrongdoers. Right? So we will get to that inshallah it's in the first quarter of uh, Surah Baqarah. Right? Then we've got Hurfatun, a room. There's no Hurfun in the Arabic language, it's a female word. Okay, like that. Sa'a uh, and uh, Kipta. Maktaba, I just need to double check on that. Uh, just leave that one out for now. Just put a line through that. I just want to double check on that. Uh, just I think that one is a must. Right, so we've got D for this. So we've got male and female. We had Talib, Talibatun, right? So they were male and female, but this one's here, the Shajara, the Hurfa, there's a handful of them. They're only female. Then you've got another one. Also, you don't need to worry about this. These by default, they don't end with a feminine ta, but they are feminine words. The earth, ardun, doesn't have a feminine ta, but it's a feminine word. Okay, so we, when we get into the Quran, we'll show you how we can identify that it's a feminine word because of the word before it or after it. So we've got ardun is a feminine word, but it doesn't have a sign on it. Don't stress, only a handful of them also. Ardun, Shamsun, the sun, right? Nafsun, oneself, your nafs. Khamrun, alcohol. Uh, Be'run, a well. Uh, Darun, a house. Narun, fire, right? So those are feminine words by default without a sign. Another sign that the noun is feminine is Alif, Mamduda, 
or alif maksura also that you don't need to worry about this for now do not worry about this samaun the sky it's a feminine word don't stress too much on it right don't worry about this when you get into the quran we'll show you just it's just to basically for now concentrate on the feminine ta that's all so we're concentrating on al we're concentrating on uh, the tanween and we're concentrating on the feminine ta for now everyone okay with that so we've got three signs already right basically the fourth one was the easiest one the third one technically the third one of identifying a noun is probably the easiest if you see any word any word let's have a look here if you see any word right and at the end it has a kasra or a kasra thing it's a noun the last the last letter has a kasra or a kasra thing on the last letter you lock it in it's a noun as simple as that right so Okay, so let me get you some examples. Okay, so if we look here, Babul Beiti, right, Antifosi? If we look here, Babul Beiti, you see the Beiti has got a kasra. immediately you know it's a noun you don't even need to think it's got more than one sign it's got the al in front also but if it's got a kasra also lock it in so you've got two signs you're lucky there there's two signs for a noun any word with a kasra at the end on the last letter it's a noun okay wal mu'minati got a kasra hajarain kasra it's a noun any word where the last letter has a kasra or a kasra thing it's a noun so i'm going to recap and then i'm going to get you guys to do something a small little exercise first of all a word Let's see who we got here. Brother Hafi. Brother Hafi. Brother Hafi, can you hear me? Yes. How are you, my brother? I'm good. Okay. Can you tell me what have you learned in terms of signs of noun? between today and the last class can you give me a summary yeah so uh, to identify a noun um, it's uh, a noun can be identified by nakira and ma'rifa so yes. that's if there is an al in front of a uh, word or yes. if it's a tanween at the end um, al or a tanween yes as so an end is, of a word yep right so that's your first one right that's correct what was the second one the second one is if there is a word which is a feminine word it's a noun what's so a sign of a, a feminine word, word? A, a word that ends with ta marbuta beautiful the ending is ta marbuta it's a yeah. noun yeah. and the easy one and the, third, and the third one is if there is a um a word that ends with um Kasra or kasra time? With a kasra 
or constructing. Mashallah, mashallah. So you already know three out of the seven. Right? So if you open the Quran, you will find three out of the seven. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a small little exercise. Again, uh, everyone will get a chance, inshallah. So no need to uh, scream out the answer. Just nice and simple. We're going to open our Quran exercise book, inshallah. And we will go to, uh, okay, we will start here. Right, we've got Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We're going to start with uh, Sister Kaniz Fatima. Yes, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum Salaam, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Right, sister, from what you've learned so far in this ayah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, can you identify any nouns even if you don't know the meaning? Ar Rahman. Why is it a noun, sister? Ar Rah is it um, like. Um, Say that um, you know it's a it's the first day you know we learned that. Okay, so what have you Rahim. It starts with Al. Yeah. Mashallah, right? So you know it's a noun, even if you don't know the meaning. Is there any more nouns in the sentence? And is there any more reasons why this can be a noun? And Ar Rahim. Why? I start with Al. Mashallah. Any yes. more? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So remember Bismillah, all the things. Bismillahi. Is it Bismillahi? Uh, so Bismi, you've got Bismi. Uh, I'm not sure about the Bismi, but uh, Bismillahi. Is it Lahi? Is that um, noun? Why is Allah here a noun? Al, it started with Al. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it starts with all uh, right. Is it correct? Yes. Okay, it starts with al and it's a pronoun, it's a name. So even Muhammad, it doesn't start with al, but it will be a noun because it's a it's a proper noun, right? So anybody's name, Ahmad, Muhammad, we know it's a noun because it's a proper noun, right? So in Allah, it's a special case, yes, it's got Allah al in it. And what else does it have? Is there any more? You've learned three signs today. Um, like Kastra, 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 thing, Kastra here, Allah, um, Bismillahi. So you've got a Kastra, mashallah, excellent. Any more? Yeah. And Rahmani, um, Rah Rahman, Rahmani. Yep. And Rahi, Rahimi. Mashallah, mashallah. One more. You see any any more? One more. Bismi is a noun. Bismi. That ends with the kasra. Yes. Beautiful. That's it. We found all the nouns. Without even knowing meanings, we found the nouns. Mashallah. Well done, sister. Right. So let's go to Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Let's go to. Uh, Hafid Ridwan, Hafid Ridwan. Aino Anta. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How are you? Kulu khair. Hala Anta Musta'id? Musta'id Akhi? Habibi. Tekallam Arabi? Musta'id. Tafam? Shway, shway. Shway, shway, Habibi. Shway, shway. Allah, Musta'id, inshallah. Okay, Faddal. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Can you give me any nouns there? And what's the reason you say the nouns? Alhamdu. Why? Why is it a noun? Because L. Okay. Well be done. It comes before Alhamdu. Al, it starts with Al. Khalas. That's a noun. Give me more. Give me more uh, nouns. Lillahi. The Kasra. 
الكسرات رايت مو ربي ربي الكسرات يس العالمين العالمين ذا ذا ال ما شاء الله ويل دان يو جوت ذا نون ذا العالمين ذا كسره جيم وي ذا كسره اخي on the meme in alamin no it's one word the kasra has to be on the last word this is not the last, oh, the last word. word the noon is the last word so the kasra has to be on the noon the last letter, the last letter sorry time. the last letter has to have the kasra does that make sense makes sense habibi okay so the last letter of the word has to have a kasra so if it's got a kasra in the middle no it's not going to be good enough got to be the last letter so alhamdulillah you found all the nouns in there right so we've got here okay ar rahman ar rahim uh, so sister done it before so we can let this one go right so it was the two alfs and the two kasras right then we got malik yawmiddin sister sara sister sara what have we got maliki why is it a noun yes Yomi, why is it a noun? Excellent. And what has it got? Wow, mashallah. So she got them both. So you see the kasras on the last letter? Lock it in. Imagine you don't even know the meanings of some of these words and you can already identify the nouns. If you were in the Arab world, they would not teach you this until one year later. Am I right, Uncle Yusuf? Yes, Asif. Up again, yeah. So what happened was Hafiz Ridwan said that Al Alamin was a noun because of this kasra, but it's wrong because Alamin is one word and the kasra has to be on the last letter. So he said because of the kasra there, that's wrong. That kasra is in the middle of the word. So that, that's why. Make sense? The last letter. Oh, now we're just showing him that this one here, it's incorrect. It's got to be on the last letter, inshallah. Okay? So, right, Brother Asif, can you find anything for us here? Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Yes, can you find anything there? Any nouns? What have you got? No nouns, mashallah. Everybody see that there's no nouns on this one. No nouns that you know of right now. Okay, so at the moment, mashallah, well done. Right, then we've got here, <laughs> Brother Salman, you ready to give this a go? Yeah. Ihdina, right? Okay, so you look at this word first? Yeah. Okay, so this one here is actually one word. So the ending won't be a kasra. It's part of one word, right? Anything else? Sirata, why is it a uh, noun? Mashallah. And the next one you've got? Al Mustaqim. Mashallah. Mashallah. Well done. Right. Okay, so we've got a long one here. Sirat al ladin and Amta Alehim, Kairin Mahdubi, Alehim Walad Dolin. This goes to Hafid Ahmad. You ready? Find me a noun. So, Sirata, we know it's not a noun, right? So, I'm just going to lift the screen for you. Find me any nouns in this ayah. Mashallah. Wow, well, Mashallah, right? So, you got three so far. Any more? Because of? As easy as that. As easy as that. 
Okay, so we've done Surah Fatiha. Yes. Where are you? Ghairi. Okay. Mashallah. Mashallah, well done. Mashallah. Lucky you're sitting in front. Mashallah. Uh, any more? You are right, Chine? Everybody okay? Abdullah? Good? Okay, so that's Surah Fatiha. You've picked up all the nouns in Surah Fatiha already. And that's on your second class. I think we're going a bit too fast, maybe. Eight months might be too long. <laughs> right. Mahmoud, since you picked that one up, Alif, Lam, Mim, we're not going to worry about that. Just, that's just particles, prepositions, right? You're going to do this. Dalika kitabu la reiba fi. Right, so. Okay, this one is two different words, right? So let's look at this one here. First, you had al kitabu, right? Because of the alif lam, right? This fi here, we're not going to worry about now because fi is a particle. And in my next class, I'm going to teach you particles. Some people call them a particle, some people call them prepositions. In, on, at with so a few two by so they join words together i am going with my friend i am in the shop so fee is in we will teach you particles later so we're going to leave this one for now but mahmoud's already picked up uh, al kitabu as a noun because of the al right any more nouns here or can i move on or you see any more nouns before i move on Right, that's it, we're done, right? This, the spelling of uh, Hidayah, it's a default spelling. The Ya is actually a Tajweed rule, but you're right. It's not on the last letter, it's a Tajweed rule. It just carries the word, but you would class this as a noun. Although it's not on that Ya, you would still class it as a noun. It's one of those special words. So from time to time, Allah Ta'ala will just humble us because now we think, hey, we know everything, we know nouns. <laughs> Relax, go easy. Go easy, inshallah, when you guys do the whole Quran, right? Like Uncle Yusuf done the whole Quran with me last year, right? When you start Surah Baqarah, you don't realize it's actually one of the easiest surahs to grammatically analyze. What's the most difficult Jews to analyze in the Quran? Grammatically analyze, what's the most difficult? Anybody knows? Choose Amma. Choose Amma is the most difficult to analyze grammatically. So that's one reason I would not start with Jews Amma. That's why we're starting with Surah Baqarah. So you're starting with uh, Surah Baqarah Ishtiyat. Imagine you're starting with Surah Baqarah. You start thinking, oh, I finished Surah Baqarah. Move on, move on. Surah Maida, Surah Al-Am, Surah Al-Af. You get on Surah Yusuf. And then again, you get to the 18th Surah. Surah Jews 16. Allah will just drop you again. The grammar just goes again. Then 18, 19, 20, 22, let Allah drops you. 23, 24, 25, 26, you, you, you feel like you're floating. When you get to Jews 27, you fall right down. The grammar again picks up. So Allah Ta'ala will humble you again. Although you think, oh, I'm already here, finished. Jews 27. Jews 28, Allah gives you a bit of a rope. Okay, Jews 28 is easy. 29 again drop you and 30 you on the ground. You'll feel like giving up in just 30. It's so beautiful. So we constantly have to remember to be humble. Constant humbleness when we are seeking knowledge, right? Allah Ta'ala will open many, many doors for us, inshallah Ta'ala. Right, so, uh, okay, Lil Mutta, can we finish there, right? Yes, brother. Yes. Hudan, it's a special word, it's, it's guidance, a guidance, right? So there's different defaults of some words. So I don't want to get into it, I'll explain you later. This ya is a tajweed thing which carries the word to hold the word, but I'll have to explain it to you later. You won't be ready to, to go into it now. But there is a reason for it, inshallah ta'ala. So we'll explain you as we go. Some, there's some rules I'm going to tell you to hold off. I'm not going to explain it because I don't want to confuse. In some words, I'll say, just wait a few weeks and I'll go into that rule. Just so we can get off the ground nicely. Because if I go into that now, you'll say, oh my God, I need to give up. Any refunds, please? Can I take my money back and go? <laughs> right? 
So, right, so we're done. Yes, a guidance. So let's, let's see, okay, we've got here. Uh, let's see who has any that turn. Junior, did you have a turn yet? Are you ready? So we've got Alladina Yu'minuna bil Ghaybi. Anything there so far? Right. Anything else? Maybe, well done. Right, while you're keeping on a solata, anything there? Because of what? Oh, what else? Nice, well done. There's a tamar buta for everyone. Mashallah. So sometimes Allah Ta'ala will give you two, sometimes three, up to four. There are some words where you will have four signs on a word, right? Right, so there's nothing on there, right? Okay. Um, let's see, any of the online students? Any of the online students ready to have a go? You can just uh, unmute yourself if you're ready to have a go. Any online students wanna go? No? Okay. So we've got a bit of an idea, right, of nouns. Let's just go. I just want to give you some more examples of feminine. While we are, uh, let's just look at what we got so far. So we've got Surah Fatiha. We've got the beginning of uh, Surah Bakra. Let's just see what is Surah Bakra about, just to give a bit of a taste. Right, so we can look a bit forward to what we're going to learn, but also the beginning, the first page of Surah Baqarah, it encompasses what a Muslim should be. If we are falling short of these, then there's something wrong. We need to check ourselves. So let's see what Allah Ta'ala says. Alif la mim, kitabu la rayba fihi. That book, yani, this book, the Quran, la rayba fihi. Absolutely no doubt in it. So if any of us say, Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think Allah Ta'ala meant this, or no, I have a doubt. No, it doesn't work that way. Allah Ta'ala, there's absolutely no doubt in this book. If Allah Ta'ala says something, yes, we have to have full yakin that it is that, that what Allah Ta'ala says. No doubt is in it. What is it? It is a guidance for who? Muttaqin, the God-fearers. Quran is a guidance for the God-fearers. Who are the God-fearers? Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaybi. Hey, we've heard this word before. Those are believing in the unseen. We haven't seen Allah. We haven't seen the prophets. We haven't seen the angels. But we believe in them. Right? They are believers. Those are believers. So Allah is telling us who are believers. Those are believing in the unseen. And they are establishing the salah. What's the difference between us and non-Muslims? Salah. So today I was having a talk with someone. I think I was having a talk with you Fajr time. We're talking about the non-Muslims. There are so many beautiful non-Muslims out there. They are giving charity. They have got beautiful akhlaq. They are doing everything so wonderful. But their rewards are in this life because they do not perform in salah. So that is one of the biggest difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is your salah. Right? So they are, those who are believing in the unseen and they are establishing the salah. yunfikun, And from what we provide them, they are spending. A Muslim is not about, allowed to be stingy. But Allah Ta'ala provides you, you need to spend. That's why we see Muslims have big families. You know, in South Africa, we only 5% of the population. But wallahi, if you ask anybody who owns a Nando's in South Africa, the quietest time of Nando's is in Ramadan because Muslims are not eating. So it just shows that Muslims spend, we take our families. I've seen Muslims go into restaurants and order quarter chicken, half a chicken, each person. But then you see a non-Muslim for this family, they order one chicken and they just each share pieces and they order one large chips. So it just shows there's proof for you. If you ask anyone, they'll tell you the busiest time, the, the, the quietest time is in Ramadan. And we're only 5% of the population. So it just shows that our, we, our Muslims are there and we have yakin that we will spend what Allah Ta'ala has provided us, right? And what was sent down to you, O Prophet Sallallahu Yani the Quran, and what was sent out from before you, the Torah, the Injil, right? That is a Muslim, we need to believe in it, right? And in the year after, they are certain. 
You have to have certainty that there's a year after. We're not going to turn to dust. We're not just going to fade away. We're certain we're going to go to Jannah, inshallah. All of us, inshallah. Allah accept, inshallah. I mean, right? We are certain, right? So what does Allah, Allah tell us now? Given you the description of a mu'min, what is uh, dutiful for us, what we have to be to be a mu'min, right? Allah Ta'ala says, if you fulfill that, ula'ika, right? Ula'ika alahu dhammir rabbihim wa ula'ika umul muflihun. Allah Ta'ala says, those are upon a guidance from their Lord. So we cannot guide anybody. For us to be here, we have been guided. So we must make shukr to Allah. What we should do if we try before we come to class, read two rakats nafil salah. Ya Allah, shukr to you. Uh, all praise to you, Ya Allah, for allowing us to be in your class and allowing you have guided us. We cannot do it on our own, right? Those are upon the guidance from the Lord and those, they are muflihun. They are the successful ones. They are the successful ones. We will stop now after da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, and we will perform our isha salah. Straight after first salah, we'll come back. Until straight after first salah, we'll come back. Sunnah and witr when you go home, inshallah. Okay? Everyone okay? Mashallah. Online students, uh, we'll just take a 10-minute break, inshallah, for Isha Salah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Everyone's ready? Everyone shifted around? Yes. Finish? All good? Auntie, you okay? So far, so good. Auntie Fozi, you want your Monday also? It's okay? Make dua fast, Auntie. Yes. Naughty boy. <laughs> Maria, you okay? Everything all right? Okay, so everyone back. I think uh, Juno is just in the bathroom. It's fine. We'd have to start. Uh, it took a bit longer today. Uh, masjid was busy. It was just a bit difficult to get out. But we tried to aim maximum 15 minutes, inshallah. <laughs> maximum. Okay, so everyone ready? Auntie? Okay. So... What we've got here, so whatever I've done here, don't stress too much about it. No need to make, to really make any notes on these signs of nouns for now. Because we are, when we get into the Quran, we are going to go through it again. I'm going to ask you again, give me the signs of nouns. We're going to count. We're going to go through the same process again. So if you haven't uh, highlighted or anything for now, don't worry at all, please. So the purpose of what we're doing here, maybe you're wondering why is he just teaching us these signs of nouns? What is the purpose of it? How is it going to benefit us in translation? So if you look at, um, for example, the first one where we found out that that's a noun, that's a noun, that's a noun, that's a noun. So knowing that it's a noun, there's nothing to be a doing word in it. So we look at this word, Bismillah rahman rahim What is the relationship between these nouns? So we see, just for your information, this ba, it's a particle, it's a preposition, right? So we say, in the name of Allah, and then we teach you to use a dictionary. So all Arabic words are based on three root letters. So once you get that, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. So like that, we will teach you to translate these are nouns. Then when we get to verbs, it's a different ball game. There's a different method of us teaching you. For example, we had iya kana abudu or iya kana stain. There's no nouns in there. There's a different method. Then we say, okay, now these are verbs and this is the method you use to translate. So like that, we will get through it. It's all building and stepping stones, inshallah. We're not just gonna start translating tomorrow. Foundation needs to be built. The stronger the foundation, the higher we can go. Just like a building, auntie. If you're building a house, your foundation may be 
two meters, but you're building a, a skyscraper, you need to go right into the ground so you can reach the sky, inshallah. Inshallah, we're going to reach the heaven soon, within eight months, inshallah. So we've got, right, so we've got, we've done this. I just want to see uh, an example, um, just something different that we've got here. Okay. Sister Fatma uh, Kajlayan. Yes. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Good, Alhamdulillah. How's your father? Uh, good, Alhamdulillah. That's good. Now, uh, Sister Fatma, I want you to look at this part of an ayah. Absarim khishawatun walum adabun adim. Can you find any nouns for us here? The Rishawatun. Why is that a noun? Because it ends with a fem feminine ta. Feminine ta, awesome. Right. And then what other words have you got for us? Any more nouns? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mashallah, well done. Any more? Mm. No. You want to look again? So we done today. We done three signs. Remember, the first one was what? Remember the first one we mm. done on Monday. We had oh, that's what definite. Are. An indefinite, right? So, mm -hmm. do you see any more nouns here? Um, Adimun. Adimun, right? So, that's a noun because of the Dhammatain. Mm -hmm. You got it? Any more? So, I'll just show you. The, this is a bit of a. Okay, it's supposed to be a Dhammatain there. You see another noun? Adabun. Adabun. Okay. Is there any other reason why there is a noun here? So if you look at Rishawatun, you told me feminine ta. Any other reason? Because it ends with um, Dhammatin. Dhammatin. Awesome. Well done. So words, there are many words where you will find that will have more than one sign. Okay. Mashallah. So I think everyone's on the same level at the moment. We're gonna look at, how much time is it, 8.24, okay. We're gonna look at just the basis of what we're studying for grammar is the end casing. So just some terminology, what, uh, because we will need this terminology to get on to the next step, inshallah ta'ala. So we already know that a word that ends with a kasra, it's in the genitive state, it's called majroor. So for short, you can just say jar. So kasra, you can call it jar. So if we got here, So if we got a word and it ends in kasra, we automatically know it's a noun, right? But the state that it's in is called majroor. So if you look back on your book here, genitive, right? So we're just going to call it jar, right? State of jar, the full word is majorur. You can just call it jar. It's represented by a kasra. So when I say a word is in jar, it means the end casing is a kasra. The last letter is kasra. Can we get one marker? 
So, well, if you can just put that, make it clear for them. Esther? So the last letter of the word is in Kasra. We call this in the state of Jar, right? Majroor, we're just going to call it Jar. Right, so we, then we've got another state. We've got Dhamma, Fata, Kasra. So Kasra is Majroor. Dhamma, if the word ends with a Dhamma, the last letter, it's in a state of Marfu, but we will just call it Raf to make it easy. Marfu, so you might hear some teachers will use the whole word Marfu, we call it Raf, right? Can anyone, can everyone online see, see, see the screen? So it's in state of yes. rough, right? So anything that ends with a Dhamma, the last letter, it's called in the state of rough, <clears throat> right? Don't, don't stress too much about these words. I will keep repeating it, right? Ends in Kasra, state of Jar. Ends in Dhamma, state of rough. And if it ends, the last letter is a Fata, it's called nasp. It's in the state of nasp. Right? So for us to be able to move on to the next section, I want to send a, I've got a small worksheet, inshallah. Uh, did I, we've got it. Okay, we're going to hand out a small worksheet. one. I'm going to just put it to the online students, just so we can familiarize ourselves, because words we've been seeing uh, in Kasra, or most of the default words we've been seeing in Dhamma, just to let you get the idea that you can have them in different states. So I'm going to shoot it off on WhatsApp, inshallah. Okay, so you all should receive uh, the WhatsApp coming through now for students online. It should look like this, what's on screen. So all you need to do, if you're not gonna print it out, just on an A4 page, write it out and send it to us. <clears throat> so let's look at the first example. We've got masjid. Now masjid can be in nasb, which is fata, masjidan. If it's in raf, masjidun, and if it is in jar, majrur, or kasra, masjidin. So follow the pattern. So you've got kitab. So under nasb, what will it be? Kitab, kitaban. For raf, it will be kitab. Kitabun and for jar it will be kitabin, just to get familiar with the words and for your handwriting skills, inshallah. Right? In extra sheets, second is an extra. Oh, plenty. And give Uncle one as well. So, uh, Brother Zakaria, Zakaria from Sydney. Sister Zuha, Sister Zuha, if you look at, let's say, for example, we got Kitab, right? Yes. So what are you putting for nasb? Kitaban. For raf. Kitabun. And for jar? Kitabin. Okay, that's indefinite. Now what if I asked you, I want kitab indefinite in jar, what would you do? 
Al Kitabi. Awesome. And in Raf? Al Kitabu. And Nas? Al Kitaba. What about Rajulu? In Nasp. In Nasp, yes. So in Nasp, if it was indefinite, it would be uh, Rajula. And if it, were, if it was definite, it would be Ar Rajula. Awesome. Mashallah. Well done. Well done. Hafid Ridwan? Hafid Ridwan, is that making sense to you? Habibi, I need to get up to speed because I missed the first 20 minutes. Okay. You missed the first 20 minutes of when? Now, 8 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock or? Yeah, at, at, uh, at 11 a.m. South African time. You missed the first 20 minutes of 11 a.m. Okay. Yes. So that was a recap of Monday, right? From 11 to 11.20 was basically a recap. Now, if you're looking at the sheet, are you looking at the sheet at the moment? No. Right, so you've got there uh Sadiq, what would Sadiq be in rough? Sadiqun. In jar. Sadiqin. And if I wanted to make it definite in rough. Definite in rough. Yes. As Sadiqun. As Sadiqun. What's your last? As Sadiqu. Nice. Because you can't have a mix and match, right? You can't have the a friend. Okay. Well done. So you'll carry on filling out that. Whoever's done can just send a take a picture and send a WhatsApp through, inshallah. Sister Fatima Kanis. Islam. So you've got Bab, right? Now, if you've got Bab, what would Bab be indefinite for Nas? Um, just a minute. Um... I'm still learning that uh, sun and moon, <laughs> moon no letter. That's okay. So you've got Bab. Okay. Let's say Bab. How would you just put it? Nas, Pras, Araf, and Jar. If it's just indefinite, what would you say for indefinite for Bab? Al Bab. Al Babun. Okay, so the first one, let's go with Nas. Uh, definite. Um, so you're adding the Al. Al Bab. Uh, is it Nas? Is it Nas? Yes. Yes. Al Baban. Just uh, either, uh, so you remember you're either adding an Al or you're making it uh, Fatatain. So if it's Al, then you can only put one. So it will be Al Baba. Al -ba. Right? Al -ba, Al Baba. Baba. Right? Awesome. Yep. Right? So Al Baba. What if it's in rough? What would you do if it's in rough for, for definite? Al Babu. Excellent. And Jar? Al Babi. Okay, what about the column in uh, indefinite rough? Um, al Kalam. Right, and indefinite? Al Kalamu. Uh, no, if you take away the Al, indefinite. I'm just want a pen. Oh, kal kalam. Kalamu. Kala? Kalamun. Yes, awesome. Mashallah, well done. Well done. Excellent. Okay, Zakaria from Sydney. No? Yes. You there? Mm. Okay, mashallah. So let's look at uh, Jidar, right? Jidar yes. is a wall. Mm -hmm. A wall in rough. So what does Jidarun. rough represent? Jidar represents, right? Mm -hmm. Adama, right? Or Damatain. Nas represents? Uh, Fathatain. And jar? Kasratain. Awesome. Right? So it can be kasra or kasratain or it can be singular, right? Mm -hmm. So if I wanted the wall in jar, 
What would you give me? Al Jidari. Nice. And A wall in Jar? Jidarin. Excellent. Well done. Auntie? Good? I need to go. Okay. No one sent it? Okay. Okay, so whoever's ready online, take a picture and send it through, inshallah. Yes. What's the point of the proof that we just remember it? It's terminology for the next. Yeah, so hold on to this terminology, right? So on the next lesson, we're going to utilize some of I'm going to start introducing this terminology, inshallah. But for now, we're just remembering. Just remember, you can open your book. Feel free to open your book to see it. Keep that sheet in front of you. Don't worry. Don't stress about memorizing. Keep that sheet in front of you. Just that you've got the concept, right? Keep the sheet in front of when I say rough nasp jar, see, okay, that's what it means. It's just a stepping stone for the next class. The, the sheet I gave you? Yeah, so keep that sheet with you. So tomorrow, immediately I'm talking rough, you can say, okay, he's talking about that. It's just a terminology, just the state that the word is in. No, it's just the, the word nasp means the word is in fata. The word jar means it's in, in kasra. The word raf means it's in dhamma. But the concept, when I explain you uh, the next sign of nouns, this will help you. You'll catch on to it. You don't need to memorize it. It will come. It will come. Don't stress about it. You can keep that sheet. You can open your book. Just when I say raf, then I'll say, okay, remember I said it's dhamma, and I'll keep reminding you. So no need to stress, inshallah. Terminology, Arabic terminology will, will come in time. It's just something to introduce to get you to the next step.
Mashallah, looks like everyone's getting on tweet, Mashallah. Okay, I've got a few that have come through, Mashallah. Some nice handwriting as well, Mashallah. You finished? Um, Sheikh, yeah. Ahmed, you okay? Okay, mashallah. Stihad. Okay. Kalaman, kalaman, kalaman. Nice. Okay. Mashallah. Mashallah. I think everyone's got this one. Everyone's okay with this? Sakina, so everyone catching? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Beautiful. So as long as you're catching the concept, I think you'll get used to the writing. The writing might be taking a bit long. So as long as you've got the concept from what we've seen, everyone's on the ball. So you can finish it off later, Auntie. Don't stress. Finish off later and send it to us. Just send it on the group. But as long as you've caught the concept on WhatsApp, I've added you to the group. Take a picture and just send it. Easy. Okay. Right. So for our last 15 minutes, inshallah, we are going to do uh, morphology. So like I told you earlier, Arabic is based on three letters. Arabic is based on three letters. With three letters, you either either add another letter to the front or to the back of it to change it to mean something else more fully, but there's a root letter. For example, fa'ala, we did the other day, he one man did. But you add a ya to it, yaf'alu, right? It puts the future tense, just by putting a ya in front. So you're either adding or removing a letter, but your root letters will stay the same. So like I told you the other day, we have a fa ain lam kalima. So in a word, the letters are fa ain lam. So if we, we say, okay, what is your fa kalima? It means your first word. Ain kalima is your middle word, the second, and lam kalima is your third. That is the word you got to look for. Even if it's something long, a long word, um, istighfar. Oh, how will I know what are the words in istighfar? There's so many letters. We'll show you ghafara, and we'll show you what gets added on it to make it istighfar. But we will teach you the three letter words. We'll be teaching the root words, but first we need to establish, now we've done nouns. <clears throat> we know what nouns are. Now I'm gonna to go to verbs. So simultaneously, you got some foundation of nouns. I will give you a little foundation of verbs. So together, once we got those, then the other one I will teach you is prepositions particles which is your in, on, at. And then I will teach you how to join these words eventually to form sentences. And then only we can start the Quran, inshallah, right? So our foundation has to be uh, quite solid to start in, right? But at the rate we're going, mashallah, I don't think it will take us long. So if we look, for example, at the screen, or this is, no, there's not in your book, but you can go in your book, you can go to page 43. So on 43 in your book, let's have a look. Okay, so morphology, I'm not going to go through now everything of the rules. Like I told you yesterday, verbs, there's past, present, future, and there's a command, right? So if we look at an example, we can say, the boy jumped. That will be past tense. 
right? So we'll teach you the past tense. We will teach you how to say the boy is jumping or he will jump. And then we're going to teach you jump, a command. The three different ones, right? So for now, we're starting off with past tense. So in Arabic, like we said yesterday, we already know how to say fa'ala. He one man did. Imagine in English, you've got to use so many words. He one man did. Arabic, fa'ala. Speaking Arabic. And if you're talking Arabic already, fa'ala. Yeah. And all those men did it, fa'alu. That's all you don't need to say. All those men did it. They, they, they were naughty. Who was naughty? Imam asked you, just say, fa'alu. They, they did it, right? So this is very important to get this started with the first scale of fa'ala. In your book, it's page 43. Uh, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to show you from another book, inshallah ta'ala. So if we look here at the screen, pretty straightforward. A verb consists of a noun, right? And time. So in this verb, fa'ala, he, one man, did. There's a noun in there, the man, right? And the time is did, he did it, or will do. That's past tense. So for the purpose of this, we're only going to do past tense. Until we get to past tense, then I'll add on future tense. I'll add on the command for you, right? But until we get this right, we can't move on. So let's look at the noun in here. The noun of fa'ala is he, right? The number, just one man. He, one man. The time is past. So fa'ala, he, one man did. For two men, it's so easy. All you need to do is add an alif. Fa'ala. Fa'ala, fa'ala. Right, inshallah, tala, we've got a guest coming tomorrow, inshallah, tala. he's a specialist in surf, in uh, morphology, inshallah, if he comes, he'll show you how to rattle it, he'll do some dancing moves for you, everybody will have to dance, and to make sure you warm up, get your back ready, there's going to be some dancing tomorrow, inshallah, if he comes, I'm, inshallah, inshallah, so we've got, fa'ala, another one way we can do it, is by hand signs, so you say, fa'ala, he one man did it. Fa'ala, so you take your two fingers. Those two men did it. Fa'alu, all those men did it. Anybody want to try the answer, see if it works? Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Sara, fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. He, one man did it. Those two men did it. All those men did it. Ahmed. Do your hand, what's it? Yeah. Easy. He, one man, those two men, all those men did it. Now that's for men. Now in Arabic, we got for the men and then we've got different words for the lady, but it's easy, right? So if you look at your page on page 43, all you need to do, so I'll show you for the, this one. So fa'ala is for the men, for the woman, you add a ta. Fa'alat. She, one lady did it. So now you've used your right hand here, fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, for the men, he, one man, those two, all those three. For the lady, fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. She, one lady, those two ladies, all those ladies did it. So if you repeat after me, so we've got fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, that's for the men. Fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. So all you're doing, you're just adding. You're just adding. So you're adding the ta there. You're adding a ta on the two ladies. And the third one, you're just putting a noon, fa'alna. So we've covered two sets of third person. We don't know who these people are. We're just saying, he did it, those two did it, those three did it. We don't really know. Like we're not pointing to someone. She did it. Those two ladies, all those ladies did it. Brother Hafi. 
Brother Hafi? Yes. He, one man, did it. Fa'ala. Those two men did. Fa'ala. All those men did. Fa'ali. She, one lady, did it. Fa'ala. Those two ladies. Fa'ala. And all those ladies. Fa'ala. Mashallah, well done, well done. Hafidh Ridwan, are you back with us? <laughs> right. All those ladies did it. <laughs> All those men did it. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> and she did it. <laughs> nice, beautiful, well done. Sister Zuha. Yes, salam alaikum. Salam. Can you go through the scale? What you learned? How much can you do? Can you do all six or can you do at least the first three? Um, like in terms of the. Just the Arabic. Fa yes. Okay. Uh, for one man did it, Fa'ala. Yes. If when those two men did it, Fa'ala. Yes. And all those men fa'alu. Mashallah. For one lady, fa'alat. Yes. For two ladies, fa'alata. Yes. And for all those ladies, fa'alna. Well done, mashallah. Excellent. Excellent. Sister Fatma Kajlayan. Yes. She, one lady, did it. Fa'alat. All those ladies did. Fa'alna. He, one man, did. Fa'ala. Well done, mashallah. Okay, well done. So I want everyone to concentrate on this. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. You need to start rattling it and get to it fast. Then we say, Fa'ala, he will mend it. Fa'alu, all those men did it. You will get it, and then we will introduce more words before we get to the end of the scale. So we've got, we've done he one man, we've done the men, the third person. Then we're going to get to the second person. If you guys can manage the first six, I don't see why you can't, why we can't carry on. So let's just look at it. We'll go over it again, but the first six, I need it solid by tomorrow, inshallah. So if we look at the next ones, so if we want to say, you one man did it. You one man. You'd go for alta. For alta, like you say, for alta. So what your hand movements are going to be? So look here. For Allah, for Allah, for Allah, for Allah, for Allah, for Allah. Then you're going to point your hand forward. You're going to point your hand forward. For alta, you did it. Huh? Ahmed, you did it. Huh? For alta. And what about if it's you and your brother? Fa'altuma. So you're just adding the alif. Like remember fa'ala, you added the alif. So you're pointing at the men. Fa'altuma. You two men. Right? And what about three? All of you men did it. Fa'altum. So the best way to do it is use your hands. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. Fa'alta, fa'altuma, fa'altum. So use your fingers as well. So three plus. Arabic, you've got Single, dual, and plural. English only single and plural. Makes sense. Yes. Yes. Arabic has got that. So some languages have got one uh, single, dual, and, and plural. English just single and boring language. Auntie, while you're driving home, while you're driving home, just use your hands and leave the steering wheel. Just go fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, right? Don't worry about steering wheel. Just drive. You'll get home, inshallah. Okay. So we've got, let's just go through it one more time. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu. Fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna. Fa'alta, fa'altuma, fa'altum. Now the ladies. Fa'alti, fa'alti. 
Cuma Cunda. Nice. Right? So we got Fa'al, then we get to Fa'al Tunna, right? And then the last ones are easy, right? So you've done your right hands, you've done your left hands, right? Now, what about for yourself? Fa'al Tu. Oops. <laughs> Hope I don't break that. Fa'al Tu. Right? So myself is broken. <laughs> we need to get an extra one. Get a bit excited. <laughs> okay. At least I'm not getting upset. Uh, Uncle Yusuf, nice to be smiling. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. It's beautiful to be teaching again. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful students. Jazakallah khair for all the students that have signed up and trusted us to do this course with us. It's going to be a beautiful eight months, inshallah ta'ala. Beautiful, inshallah. I'll make it easy for us. So we've got, I did. So now you've already used your fingers for he, he, she, she, you, and you female. Now you worry about it. Fa'al tu. You can hug yourself if you want. Fa'al tu, right? And you say, Fa'al na. Rabbana atina. You see that na? Give us. Fa'al na. All good? Mahmoud, let's go through the whole scale. Say from the top. Fa'al atul, fa'al, fa'al na. Let me, let me give you the mic because this looks very promising. You can look if you want, but try your best. Okay. Fa'ala. Falu, falu. Look at the okay. Let me let me minimize it, right? Go through the board. How old are you? Yeah. Mashallah. Okay, let's go. Fala, fala, falu, falta, falat, falta, falna, falat, faltuma, faltum. Falti, Faltuma, Faltuna, Falu, Falat, Faltu, Falna. That was 16 seconds. I need it to be 8 seconds. So you're going to go Fala, Fala, Falu, Falat, Falata, Falna, Falna, Faltuma, Faltum, Falti, Faltuma, Faltuna, Faltu, Falna by tomorrow. Huh? Possible? Mashallah. Well done, everyone. Just like one of you for coming. Uh, I like to finish on time. So it is 8.59. May Allah accept from us, may Allah protect us, may Allah guide us. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.